Hello and welcome everyone. This is the part 4 of a series of tutorials on Web API 2 with NDD framework which is adapted from Mike Wesson of the Microsoft ASP.NET group and today we are going to see how to handle the NDD relations and also how to handle circular navigation properties in the model classes. Eager loading versus lazy loading. When entity framework is used with a relational database, it's important to understand how entity framework loads related data. It's also useful to see the SQL queries that entity framework generates. To trace the SQL, we add the following code in the book service context con constructor. So I will just copy it from my clipboard and then paste it on my book service context class here and build the application. Now, if we browse, if we run the application, and browse to API slash books. And then we see the output debug window. We'll see that this is the query generated by the entity framework. Now select statement here. If you look at the select statement, inspect it closely, you will find it takes from the books table and doesn't reference the author table. Now for reference here, we stop the application. We have the books controller class and we inspect the iQueryable get books method. See we get a return db dot books. Now Let's see how we can return the author as part of the JSON data. There are three ways to load related entity, data, entity framework data, eager loading, lazy loading, and explicit loading. There are trade-offs with each technique, so it's important to understand how they work. So first of all, we'll see eager loading. So with eager loading, we use system.data.entity.include extension method. So we already have system.data.entity in the using statement. So we can use the include extension, which is dot include and use a lambda expression over here, say b goes to b dot author, right? Build the application again. Now this again, we will run the application and browse to API slash books. And shortly we'll see that this time we get the author data in the query. So we get author here, the author data, right? Now, if we inspect the output debug window again, 
So we will see this one. This statement which puts an inner join on the two tables, books and authors. And now we will look at the lazy loading. With lazy loading, Entity Framework automatically loads a related entity when the navigation property for that entity is dereferenced. To enable lazy loading, we will make the navigation property as virtual. In the book class, so in the book class, we'll make this navigation property as a virtual navigation property by using the virtual keyword. Build the application again. Now we'll consider a following code in the books controller class. This code this I will uncomment. And I will comment out the original code. Because I need to show you the lazy loading. This code was used for the eager loading. Right? Now, let's see. We'll run the application once more. So control shift B and then I'll run the application once more to show you the SQL query returned out of the entity framework. By browsing to API slash books. Right, so we'll see the output window and see that there are three trips to the author table for three authors. So that is the books. And this is the first trip. This is the second trip. And this is the third trip to the three authors. Right. So there are still times, stop the application, there are still times when you might want to use lazy loading. Eager loading can cause entity framework to generate a very complex join or you might need related entities for a small subset of the data and lazy loading would be more efficient. One way to avoid serialization problem is to serialize data transfer objects instead of entity objects. I will show this approach later. And there is a, another third variety. So we have got eager loading, lazy loading, and this third one is explicit loading. Explicit loading is similar to lazy loading, except that you explicitly get the related data in the code. It doesn't happen automatically when you access a navigation property. Explicit loading gives you more control over when to load related data, but it requires extra code. Now, finally, we look at navigation properties and circular references. When we define the book and the author models, we defined a navigation property on the book class for book author relationship, but we def didn't define a navigation property from author to book. So what happens if we add corresponding navigation property to the author class? So what I'll do is I will put a navigation property from authors to the books table by pasting this code over here, building it. Now, if we run the application once more and browse to the same 
URI API slash books it should come up with an error because I have enabled the JSON formatter it is an error right so on the other hand if I enable a XML formatter it will give me an XML error. Now, how to get rid of these errors? One solution is to use data transfer objects, which we'll describe in the next section. Alternatively, you can configure the JSON and XML formatters to handle graph cycles. So, for this tutorial, we don't need the author.book navigation property, so we can leave it out. Thank you for watching.